What is EV or expected value in Hearthstone Battlegrounds and how do you use it to get better? So EV is a term used by a lot of high rank players uh, when they play Hearthstone Battlegrounds to describe certain units and certain plays that they make. Uh, so expected value, the value that you expect from a play. Uh, but what actually is this and uh, how do you understand it the best? I think the best way to learn how to use EV and get better at it is uh, with a couple examples. Let's start off with a very simple example. Um, we're on tier 1, we're playing Rafam, and we got this shop before us. So let's just look at the two left minions, the Rockpool Hunter and the Whelp in the middle. So the expected value from the Rockpool Hunter, it's a 2-3. So the stats is usually um, the first thing you look at. It's a 2-3 for next fight. That's it. It's a Murloc, so it gets you 3 traps on the bird. So bonus is that you have Menagerie in case you hit the cup. Uh, it's a Murloc, so it gets buffs from War Leader, from other Murlocs. So the expected value from the 2-3 is next fight, it's a 2-3, and it is a Murloc and not a tribe on your board. If you look at the Whelp, it's only a 1-2, so technically it would be less stats for the next fight, less tempo. But you have two Dragons on the board already if you buy it, so it will deal 2 damage. And you have two Whelps, so it's a pair, meaning that it's a triple potential. So expected value, this could triple into a 4-star or a 5-star unit. It's going to start off the combat with dealing 2 damage, and if you buy more dragons in the future, it's going to deal more damage. So I know most of you understand this, but this is just a very basic um, example of how expected value in the early game with two simple units is going to determine that the Whelp here is a better pick than the Rockpool Hunter. For our next example, we are going to triple the Whelp that we took, so our expected value became true, and we got the 4-star that we wanted. Now. Our options are Harold, Sensei, and the Captain. Uh, we're gonna look at all three of these. So the ex expected value for Harold is pretty basic. It is just a power play. It's a tempo play. Harold, again, it's 5-6 in stats. Um, and it overkills, which is really good in early game. So it's a big tempo play, but that's it. There's no added expected value to it. Iron Sensei, it's a 2-2. Two -two. But it gives a mech plus 2 plus 2, so expect expected value for next fight is a 4-4 four four in stats, but the fight after it's a 6-6 six six in stats, and then an 8-8 eight eight in stats. So uh, in 10 turns from now, the expected value is going to be over 20-20 stats. Now the only issue is it's a 2-2, two two, it's very slow, um, and we don't have a good mech on the board right now. If you would have like a deflector bot or something with a module on it, um, you could take this if you're ahead. So expected value is really good late, later in the game, but for next turn it is very slow. And if you look at the captain, expected value, it's a 3-4 body, but you already have two pirates, good pirates, on the board with the captain. You have a good pirate in the shop. So this is actually the biggest tempo play of them all. It's way more stats than the Herald is gonna put on the board. And it can help you scale. If you buy more pirates in the shop and next turn and the turn after, you're gonna get way more stats from this captain than you're ever gonna get from the sensei. And on top of that, an added bonus is it gives direction. Right now you don't know what you're doing with your board and the captain might push you into pirates. So you finally know what you're doing for the game. So if you look at all these units, sensei, might have more expected value into the very late game if it ever sticks around but right now the captain has the best out of all three so that's why we're gonna take the captain here because we're gonna get super strong it's the biggest tempo play and it has the most expected value for the next coming turns and it gives us direction here's a very simple example where using expected value we're gonna evaluate why gold grubber is such a good unit especially early on with edora so um, we have a 6-6 Murloc on the board here, Toxfin, it's a 1-2, that gets Poison, expected value is pretty obvious. Poison is not going to do anything for the next couple rounds, only in the late game the expected value could be much higher depending on what you face. But right now it's literally just a 1-2, it's super bad. Uh, and if you look at the mug, it's a 5-5, five five, um, which isn't bad in stats, it's not great because it also has no tribe on its own. You could hold it in hand, look for two more tribes next turn but we only have 7 gold, we can't even roll. So, best case, it could turn into a 9-9, which is really good. But still, if you look at Gold Grubber, it's only a 4 for next round, because it gets plus 2, plus 2, but it keeps on scaling, just like Iron Sensei. The only difference is that it scales on its own. We don't need to have Maxin, it's gonna grow one big unit, 
and the more golden units we get in four turns we guarantee another golden unit so it's gonna get plus four plus four around and if we hit a triple on gold gerber it's gonna scale twice as fast and it's even gonna scale on its own because it's golden so the expected value for gold gerber you're gonna lose next fight probably because it's not that much tempo but then a couple fights it's gonna grow out of control and it's gonna keep on improving and improving so it's an easy gold gerber obviously um let's move on to a final example here again we triple into a 5, now don't forget expected value is also really important when you just buy units from the shop or roll down the shop, but triples are the easiest way to illustrate this. Um, here we have 3 very interesting options, scavenger has no value to us because you have no taunts, it's literally a 2-3 so that's never the option here. Um, but the other 2 are 2 pirates, we have Goliath in the middle, which is a 6-7 with win for e. it's very good stats. And it gives for overkill every pirate plus 2 plus 2. So if it manages to overkill, it gets plus 4 plus 4 for every pirate if it overkills twice. Or at least plus 2 plus 2 a pirate. Only issue is we don't have any pirates on the board. We can still transition into pirates. So um, expected value is if we fill a board with pirates, we might get uh, so 6 more pirates. If it overkills once, it's plus 12 plus 12 stats, which is already insane. Best case, plus 24 plus 24 stats, which is 1 unit. Only issue, like I said, is we don't have any pirates yet, it might take us two turns to fill a board, and then we are forced into pirates. Meaning, uh, we're pirates for the rest of the game, and pirates is not a really scalable comp. Pirates is strong, but it loses late game to mechs, to murlocs, to other things. So, we could take it, we could transition, but we also have Pagel. Pagel is an 8-5, which is also very good tempo, because an overkill is some of the chest. It's very RNG, maybe it's a 2-2 a a, a that comes out of the chest, but maybe it's a Golden Coiler. Um, I think Pagel is the, the biggest tempo play you can take here, because it's an 8-5, with potential to summon crazy amount of stats, which is not really predictable. But it allows you, we're on 40 HP, so if we take the biggest tempo play here, it allows us to just level next turn, and look for something better that helps us scale, like a Bran, a Light Fang, Caligos, like whatever. Um, but just a better resource, because we don't have to go pirate just because we found a Goliath. Um, so the expected value on Goliath is a bit more, but we don't have to take it, because if we take the biggest tempo play, the expected value from Pagel could be that we find better direction, because um, we have the freedom to level next turn and look for something else. Alright, I want to end this video with some closing thoughts, um, while in the background you can see how the Pagel game went. Um, and see how we found different direction by taking Pagel. Um, first of all, expected value is not a term created by the Battlegrounds community, it comes from different games. Uh, I think it comes from or it originated from poker, uh, but it applies really well to Battlegrounds, so that's why I think it's worth learning and sharing this term, um, because it's a great way to talk about the game. And secondly, I want to share how you can use this the best in your games. Expected value, you have two ways that you can go about doing this. If you're super ahead, if you're winning the game, um, or if you want to be greedy, you take the unit with the most expected value always, right? Um, in our, my previous example, it was clearly net Pagel, because it has much more potential later than Goldiaf has. Same with Goldgrubber. Um, so try to go for the highest expected value play in the future, but if you're losing, if you're at 8 HP, if you're really weak compared to your opponents, or if you want to get stronger, then you look at the most expected value for next turn. Just take the biggest tempo play, whatever is going to give you the most sets next turn, and it's still not going to lose you the game. This is usually a top 4 strategy when things go really bad. So expected value, I think you always use it in those two ways. The most expected value late game, or the most expected value next turn. Uh, don't pick anything in between, because that's really bad. Just go for one on the other, and that's how I think you're going to get the most out of this. So if you enjoyed it, please leave some feedback down below. Um, maybe subscribe, I'm going to do way more videos like these. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day, and good luck in the Battlegrounds.